Hi, my name is Marcia Skripik, and I'm the author of Underground Soldier, and I'm going to read a little bit of this to you on behalf of the Children's Book Center, who is sponsoring World Read Aloud Day, which is today. Uh, Underground Soldier is the companion novel to my Silver Birch Award-winning book, uh, Making Bombs for Hitler, which was published by Scholastic Canada. Underground Soldier just came out in January 2014, and it's about Luca, who was uh, Lita's friend in Making Bombs for Hitler, but he escapes from the slave labor camp. And in Making Bombs, we don't know what happens to him for an entire sequence, like for a you know, couple of years, what happens to him. Uh, so uh, in, in uh, Underground Soldier, uh, Luca does escape from the slave labor camp and he tries to walk back home all the way to Kiev, which is really impossible because there's a war happening between, you know, where he escaped from the slave labor camp and Kiev. And so he encounters other escaped slaves, including Martina, who he befriends, and they start to try to make their way together to some place of safety. Um, they ultimately encounter an underground army uh, which is fighting both the Soviets and the Nazis. But before that happens, they get themselves into a fair bit of trouble and um, difficult circumstances. So I want to read you a little bit about uh, one of those circumstances. One thing uh, that happened to them while they were on the run is that they didn't have a whole heck of a lot of food. And so uh, at one point they were eating raw mushrooms, which didn't really set on um, their stomachs so well. Uh, so anyways, uh, I ate my second mushroom savoring the taste and the fact that it filled my stomach. I closed my eyes and was asleep before I knew it. Some hours later I woke up with my stomach roiling in pain. It must have been that second mushroom. I had to relieve myself or I would burst. I pushed up one fir branch and looked outside. Bright sunlight hit my eyes, but there was no one around. It was probably midday, the worst time to get out, but I had no choice. If I stayed where I was, I would foul all, all our gear. If I was lucky, I could get out, relieve myself, and get back into our hiding place without Martina waking up. She would be furious if she caught me out in the middle of the day. I slipped out of our hideaway and crept to a wooded gully a few meters away. I had just finished my business and was zipping up my trousers when the ground shook. I scrambled behind a, a thick tree and held my breath. The ground trembled again. Moments later, a woman passed, barefoot and wild-eyed, carrying a coat and boots. What had made the earth shake? What had she run from? I tried to find out if we were in immediate danger before I went back to our hideout. I darted from one tree to the next, keeping hidden all the way. Finally, I came to an opening in the woods where I could see down to a scattering of cottages along the country road. Along the near side of the road rolled a long line of dull grey Soviet tanks, their guns pointed towards the houses. It seemed odd that the Soviets would aim tanks at remote cottages. I was trying to puzzle it out when all at once a row of green German tanks crested the hill behind the houses. As if on cue, they lowered their guns, aimed at the Soviet tanks, and fired a deafening roar. The Soviet tanks fired back and the ground shook again. The thatched roof of one cottage flew off, flaming. The door burst open and a man ran out, a toddler in his arms. He headed towards me. I realized what I was witnessing, the war zone, the front, it was right here.